Good morning. Today's obituaries are brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Graveside services for Lily May Berry, age 85, of Bremen, will be at 2 p.m. tomorrow at Johnson Grove Cemetery. Moss Service is directing. Ms. Berry passed away on Monday. Visitation will be 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. tomorrow. Graveside services for Winfred Wisnant, age 55, of Holly Pond, will be at 11 a.m. tomorrow at Holly Pond Cemetery. Benjamin Smothers will officiate. Holly Pond Funeral Home is directing. She passed away on Monday. Visitation will be from 6 to 8 p.m. tonight. And those are our obituaries brought to you by Moss Service and Hansville Funeral Home. Welcome to Today on Two. It is Wednesday, the 8th day of August, and I don't have to look out the window today because <laughs> I already did that. Oh, okay. I did that. So you know the time. weather then? Yes. Good. I'm Probably. so glad you could Hold forecast it. it for us. <laughs> the weather forecast brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Make the switch to Mitch. And then let's see, what are we going to start with? Weather almanac for today. The average high temperature remains at 92. The average low is 66. The record high, 103, set in 1930. The record low, 54, 1974. Sunset this evening at 741. The sunrise tomorrow morning at 4 minutes after 6. There's the satellite picture. You can see, whoa, a lot of rain activity in the Midwest, northern Texas. Off the coast, I didn't see the hurricane coming in there. Was it Hurricane Ernesto? Yes. It's coming in through the Caribbean, supposed to hit Mexico, I believe. Right, not supposed to really affect us. But yeah. Here's the forecast for today. It'll be a sunny day today. How about that? No chance of rain. Really? Doesn't look that way right now, but you know, <laughs> things can change. <laughs> this is the first day in several weeks we haven't had a slight chance of rain. High today of 92. Partly cloudy tonight, low near 70. Sunny again tomorrow, but a 40% chance of rain tomorrow, high around 89. On Friday, 40% chance of rain with a high around 87. 83 for the high on Saturday. Wow. Sunday, 88, back into uh, the 90s on Monday and Tuesday. So there you go with the weather for the next several days. Don't be surprised if you get a little pop-up shower once in a while, but nothing in the forecast today. I got some rain last night. Did you? Perhaps. You don't know. <laughs> What time did it rain? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, probably about 8 o'clock. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Rained about 8. We. I don't think it was real hard. Don't know how long it lasted, but I was letting the dogs outside, and there was, you know, it was raining. I so. was extremely busy watching beach volleyball. Oh, <laughs> well, and, I know you cannot be taken know, away I from I do not that. multitask. No. So if there's a storm going on and I'm watching something good on TV, I don't know. Now, normally you do multitask. You sit there and you read a book and you watch TV, but I would imagine that the beach volleyball kept your uh, your attention and you did not divert from that at all. No I'm book sure, class yeah, No book last no night, book I'm class sure. Night. <laughs> you were just really watching <laughs> volleyball and not the women that were playing the volleyball, right? Yes, I was. <laughs> In their skimpy little swimsuits that they wear. Is that what they were wearing? Ah, oh. <laughs> but this is their uniform. Uh -huh. I but, guess uh, in all fairness, Kim was reading. Oh, well, I can imagine. I understand. 
<laughs> I'd be reading too, going, huh. <laughs> oh, well. And uh, the thing that's interesting about the beach volleyball is the two American teams will play for the gold medal tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So we don't know who to root for, <laughs> two American teams. Now, they don't play against each other, right? They will tonight wow. for the gold medal. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Does that normally happen? Well, there, like was, there were two teams. They beat everybody else. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I'm sure somebody has their favorites. So, so. Uh, I'll have to just root for all four of them. That's right. And whoever so. wins is fine. That, that'd that's be great. Right. Uh -huh. want so, does that mean the other team would be silver? Yeah. Or is that how that works? Uh -huh. Oh, well, then, goodness yeah. gracious. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they do work hard. Those girls really do work hard. I don't see how they play with just two players on the it. team. I mean, that's. You know, I grew up playing volleyball in school, and you had nine players, you yeah. know. <laughs> and if you ever got to touch the ball, you were lucky. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Who's our Facebook friend of the day for today? Uh, is Henry Prater? Prater? How would you say that? Prater. Prater? Maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess with two T's it might be Prater. Anyway, well, Mr. Henry, let's see. He likes Alabama football, and he likes preaching. Well, good for him. Wonder Looks what like he, is. he likes large tombstones yes, also. Yes, I'm wondering where he is. Where <laughs> I, You know, I wonder if he's, I don't know. Doesn't it look like maybe it's someplace no foreign idea. or whatever? What like, do you think? <laughs> We don't want to ask George. No, I'm not asking George. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but anyway, so it looks like he likes to travel as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for being our Facebook friend today. And we have a guest with us today that we are very anxious to talk to. We, yes, we, we like are. to talk to authors, yes. and both of us have read the book. Yes, we have, and it was really a fast read. I read it in a day mm -hmm. and, and a couple of hours, a day and then a couple of hours. It just, well, less than two days. How about that? It took me to read that book. It was one of those things that I just couldn't put down. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting, very interesting. Uh, Miss Reba Ponder Weiss has written this, I know, Sarah's Confession. And uh, just a very, uh, like I said, it's a short read, but it's very interesting, very good. Starts out really kind of funny, but boy, it turns immediately <laughs> to something very serious. Yes, it does. So, something you said you've just never read a book like this before, huh? Just right. a little bit different than mm -hmm. what we would typically yeah. uh, read. So, um, it's not necessarily a chick flick, is it? No. No. <laughs> no. no it it's got a lot, of, a lot of things to think about, too. I think mm -hmm. she's very relevant for a lot of things that are happening right now. So anyway, so we are going to visit with Miss Reba Ponder Weiss, who is actually from this area. That's right. Yeah. And George Spear is here. George will be talking about the news and maybe have a comment or two <laughs> right after this. In times like these, the special moments are more important than ever. At Eva Bank, we understand your life can be a bit hectic, so we offer a variety of personal banking options with individual assistance. From online banking to advantage savings and checking, as well as loans to further your family's success. Eva Bank, making your financial needs easier so you can get back to the more important things. That's the Eva Bank Advantage. Life lived in black and white is not a life lived. Today, I choose color. To see it. To feel it. To be in it. To be upon it and to live a life surrounded by it. Today, I put on a fresh coat. At Premier Bank, we are very proud of the long-lasting relationships we have with our customers. We'll go almost anywhere to meet your banking needs. Who is the tall, dark stranger there? Maverick is the name. Riding the trail to who knows where. Luck is his companion. Gambling is his game. Smooth as a handle on a gun. Maverick is the name. Wild as a wind in Oregon. Blowing up a canyon. Easier to tame. Time for news and comment. 
giving us a call at that number. And also, don't forget, we're live streaming on channel2cullman.com. You can watch as well as look at older shows that we've had this week, last week. We've just started that. Our two superintendents of education, Jan Harris and uh, Billy Coleman, weighing in on the fact that the state has announced there will not be no further funding cuts for education this year. Alabama Education Trust Fund should collect enough state income taxes and other uh, levies to meet its spending target for this fiscal year. So things look pretty good for this, uh, this school year. Next week, Wright Austin starts uh, West Point County School start in about a week or so. Enjoy it while you can, I always thought to myself. At any rate, yesterday, late yesterday morning, something of a chase going on in Coleman. It's kind of interesting because uh, this particular individual seeing his car broken into on St. Joseph Avenue decided not to wait for the posse. Let's take matters into our own hands. He walks up to these two individuals breaking into his car, allegedly Billy John Tothro, Randy Joe West, confronts them. They leave. He takes chase. Police are called. They finally catch these two individuals on I-65 after a, a chase of sorts. Not sure about the details, but in broad daylight to go breaking into someone's car and their home. What's going on there? People must be desperate is all I can figure. Well, people aren't desperate down in, or out in Holly Pond. What's the difference between Holly Pond and Hansville, other than the spelling and the geographical location? It's a tempest down in uh, Hansville, isn't it, when it comes to politics. But the city council and the mayor in Holly Pond has no opposition this time around. How about that? They just <laughs> of course, the mayor, uh, Herman Nell, joked after they yesterday they made the motion during their meeting, council meeting, to approve everyone staying on the council since they had no opposition. He says he didn't know if it was a good or a bad thing that no one on the council had any opposition. <laughs> I wonder if it's in the water, the difference between those two communities. Because it's always been that way. And isn't it strange how that is? You've got certain families, maybe, or there's something in the air. Can't blame the water. It all comes from... Yeah, <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, they've got wells. We've got well water down in, uh, down in Hansville. Some of it, don't they? I don't know. We had well water when I was a kid. We didn't have city water until I came back in the 70s. Let's see what else. Uh, Jeff Sessions, our senator, coming to Coleman yesterday, touring the area to see what can, maybe more can be done, giving Coleman praise. He says, uh, Sessions says that the reports are very good that Coleman's made a dramatic recovery. He says, and I didn't realize this, in fact, they've won an award for the recovery they've achieved since the storm. I didn't realize that. I guess I'd lost track of that. He says, people of Alabama are resilient. They know a disaster when they see one. Well, I think I would do. <laughs> no offense, Jeff. Let me think. Let me see. <laughs> That's the trees are standing. Let's see. You know, over here, the trees are gone. Now, yeah, I think we'll probably figured that one out. I think I think I understood what he meant by that. Nonetheless, he said they're willing to face up to it and overcome those disasters. I like Jeff. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Sometimes when you want to make such a pronounced statement, be careful what you say. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Florence police looking for, uh, or rather having to arrest a 31-year-old woman who went to a pain clinic to get relief, and when the nurse wouldn't give her what she thought was the right medicine, she punches her in the nose. 31-year-old <laughs> Sheree Denise Taylor did this. Can you believe that? Isn't that amazing? You know, some folks know more than the doctor knows. Well, sometimes that can be the case if you are certain something's really wrong going on and you don't think you're, it's being diagnosed. In the Muscle Shoals area, alcohol, tobacco, farms, investigators are looking into the break-in of a pawn shop. Seventy-five weapons <laughs> taken. Seventy-five. Oh, my goodness, you know. I'm sure that they'll be looking at uh, 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 incident reports and shootings and everything to see what happened there. Something happened to me. In 1960, no, 1971, 1971, came back to Coleman. I had been in, on a tour in Vietnam. And I went to Harold Mayo's gun shop to buy a pistol, having come from Vietnam and uh, being a young uh, Vietnam veteran, just had just had gotten married, I decided I wanted a weapon because I knew I was going to be stationed at Memphis, Tennessee and in a rural area, which is where my wife and I live, and I wanted some protection for her. So I was going to show her how to use a pistol. So I bought this pistol, and that was a 32 caliber. 
and I forgot the net brand name. At any rate, went through that tour, went to uh, Marine Barracks, Fort Meade, Maryland, and spent a tour, then went to Hawaii. Didn't really, kept the weapon all the time, right? Back in 94, about 1994, I was back in Coleman, and I was talking with Harold Mayo. And Harold says, George, you know, you're only one of two people who bought this type of pistol. He said, in Coleman there was a shooting, and it was one, it was from the same caliber weapon that you bought. In fact, we think it was the same pistol, type of pistol. He said, and we got to checking, and I had no idea this would happen. We found out you were in Hawaii. I said, yeah. So the other guy is the one who became the suspect. Isn't that amazing? Even back then, they were able to do that. Of course, now DNA evidence, my goodness, who knows what you can find out. Well, this is what it looks like whenever you're working on the Internet and trying to buy things on the Internet. Amazon, Apple got cracked. I mean, they found a flaw in security, believe it or not. There's this news magazine, this magazine called Wired, that's for the tech folks who love to study computers and hacking and that sort of thing, you know, breaking into people's account. Mac Honan's uh, one of the senior writers. He got his account hacked. How? Here's what the folks did. They knew he had an Amazon account. A lot of folks do who are in the business and who are savvy with computers. The individual did this. They called Amazon. Now, this is an online uh, web uh, sh uh, place where you, that you go to shop for books and all kinds of things. They called Amazon. They told them that they had like to add a credit card to their account. Talking about Honan's account, right? This, this news writer. The company asked, as they always do, your name, your billing address, and an associated email address. That's it. They knew that this writer's email address was such and such. Okay? So they allowed this hacker to give them another email address. Okay, so Amazon's got this other email address, which is a bogus one. Hang up. A late while later, they called Amazon back. They said, we've lost access to our account. So what does Amazon say? They say, give us your name, billing address, and a credit card associated with your account. That's the one you just called in. So you give them that, right? Well, all of a sudden, you've got access to that person's account. That's how that sort of thing happens. And it happened, I guess, with, uh, with Apple also. Uh, I'm not sure exactly to what extent. But here's a, here's a guy who writes about hacking, and he got hacked, right? So you have to be careful online with security, obviously. If, if socialism is such a great idea, why is the France ready to impose a 75% tax on the rich people? <laughs> oh, gosh, 75%. If everybody's going to get something for free, then somebody's going to pay for it, aren't they, huh? Well, that's the way that goes in socialist countries. Hello? Hello? Are y'all listening? You know? Dodge withdrawing from NASCAR. Say what? Wasn't it the Dodges? Wasn't it Plymouth that Richard Petty drove? And it was in NASCAR, right? I mean, what young middle-aged person, what older person doesn't remember looking at the car magazines during study hall and seeing Richard Petty and seeing those Dodges, right, and those muscle cars and such? Dodge, they've lost, I guess, some of their team. So as a result, they've decided they're not going to be participating next year in, uh, in, in NASCAR. Oh, I hate to hear that. That's one of those things that, uh, to me, just seems like it's uh, hard to take. I don't know. Talking about, uh, talking about uh, identity theft, something happened to me that I think, how much time do we have? Or did you give me a cue or something? I don't think, I, I want to make sure before I get into the story, it's going to take a, a couple of minutes. We're having trouble with our equipment. Okay. If you think that you're isolated from things like big banks going belly up and losing business, think again. In the spring of, uh, in the spring of 2009, okay, that's a little over three years ago, my wife and I refinanced our home and property, refinanced. We got locked in with Superior Bank. Superior Bank, a couple of months later, got shut down by the feds. Poor loans, bad credit, that sort of thing, right? So it went to another bank. Our loan did. I wasn't aware of it because my wife was paying the mortgage payment. Went to another bank. Somewhere in the process, $204 did not get paid 
and we didn't know anything about it. Three years later, $204 with interest with late fees each month. I got a letter from a, a debt, debt collection agency a couple of days ago for $1,900 because somewhere in that process of one bank going belly up and being sold those loans to another company, somewhere $204 was not paid. Now they're trying to collect $1,900 from me. Film at 11, we'll tell you more about it. Stay tuned. Up next, more of today on 2. We're entirely too lax around here. Now, now in the big city jails, they give sobriety tests. Sobriety tests? <laughs> to find out whether or not a man is sober. And I think we ought to do a chair, too. <clears throat> well, Barney, I believe a sobriety test is given to a prisoner when you first bring him in. Now, you ought to have done that to Otis last night. Oh, Andy, you know we couldn't have given a sobriety test to Otis last night. Well, why not? He was too drunk. The Andy Griffith Show, starring Andy Griffith, with Ronnie Howard. Also starring Don Knotts. What's going on up there? <laughs> You'll get used to it after you've been here a while. That goes on practically every morning. Right. Right. Oh! Hey! 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 Let's do that. We're gonna fight. Now take your time, boys. Where do you think you're going to a fight? <laughs> in the area probably call her Reba Ponder. Reba Ponder Weiss is our guest today. Reba, good to have you on the program oh, today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show. And you ran off and married a guy by the name of Joseph Weiss, is that right? Yeah, he's a Yankee, but <laughs> don't hold it against okay. him, okay? He's a country boy at heart. He really is. Yes, in fact, I was trying to figure out where he's from because you brought him in with you this morning, uh -huh. and he opened his mouth. I said, mm, I know. <laughs> we know you're not from the South. No, not from the South. <laughs> but I love it. I love that accent. Yes, I do, too. It's so funny to have the roles reversed for us mm -hmm. because most of the time, you know, it's me. The minute I open my mouth, people, you're not from around here, are right. you? But the minute he opens his mouth, they're like, you're not from around here. <laughs> Where are you from? Right. And you've been on this book tour, so. Uh, yes, we've been here since August the 4th, and uh, we've we've just been on a whirlwind. It just, I, um, I love it, though. I love coming home. I love being back in the South. I love being around my family and all my friends, and just, I mean, there's just been an outpouring of people coming out to the book signings and mm -hmm. and just you know people I haven't seen in 30 years just and, you know thank goodness for Facebook because yeah. a lot of times I'm like oh that's her you know right, <laughs> but it's right. been great yeah. uh, we Go it's going to talk about that in a few minutes, but I really kind of wanted to focus on the fact that you are from here from the south. Am, so where I did am. you grow up? I was born and raised in Jones Chapel, actually Chances Crossroads. Okay. Um, it's about 12 miles west of of Coleman and. Uh, my mom and dad had a farm out there, and we, you know, I was I lived there till I was 25 years old, and went to uh, Sanford University and West Point High School and uh -huh. Jones Chapel Junior High. I was part of the feeder schools, you know, where you fed into the high schools, right. and and um, then I moved away, and I've lived in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and. Columbus, Georgia, upstate New York, and I finally landed up on Long Island, New York, and that's where I'm living right now. I live near the Hamptons. I work in the Hamptons. I live in a little town right outside of Southampton, New York, and so I get to see, you know, a lot of famous people all the time, you know, and you know, I'll be at the red light, and someone will be there, you know, like, I don't know, like Steven Spielberg or something, you know, I'll be like, hey. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah. I think that's Steven Spielberg. Yeah. <laughs> don't panic, don't panic. Don't yeah. panic. The other day I saw uh, Johnny Depp and he was in a Jeep uh, driving down the beach road and I thought, is that Johnny Depp? And I was 
like, yeah, that's Johnny Depp. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's cool. kind of cool. Man. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, well, what prompted you to write a book? I mean, it sounds like that's really not your what you're doing for it. It's uh, not what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to tell you it's always been in me. You know, my grandmother was a fantastic storyteller, and all the people in my families are, you know, they're fantastic storytellers. And I just, re you know, it just was ingrained in me. Like my, mother, my grandmother used to take me out under the pecan tree and tell me all these fascinating stories about when she was in the Depression and, you know, how things were. My dad tells me stories all the time about when he was in World War II and he was actually in Hiroshima and Nagasaki right after the the uh, bomb was dropped there like I mean it's really scary it was only like, like six months after the bomb was dropped you know and uh, just the stories they're so rich and so deep and so you know interesting and I just I'm really I'm kind of tired of all these stories that have all this graphic violence and foul language and you know all this sexual content and everything that's just you don't need that if you've got a good story mm -hmm. and um, and I just had some stories inside of me and um, I've, I've always been a real avid dreamer I've had these real vivid dreams all my life and I started journaling those when I was in my teens and so when I go back and I want to write a story I, you know, I look through that journal, I make sketches and everything, I look through that journal, and that gives me kind of a basis, and then I just go from there, and it's... Now, this is your first book, It right? is my first book. Okay. It is. The first published book. I mean, I've, I've written other things, but this mm -hmm. is the first thing I've actually published. Reba, so. I'm always curious when I talk to authors about the difficulty of getting a book published. Okay. Uh, tell us your experience. Well, I'm going to tell you, I... You know, I, did, I at first I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if, you know, some big publishing house mm -hmm. picked me up and, you know, you just get stars in your eyes thinking, oh, you know, it could be the next big, you know, Harry Potter right, or whatever. Right. But the truth of the matter is, is most authors, especially first-time authors, they're more in that middle range. And if you can get to that middle range, you're pretty good. You usually don't get big advances or anything like that. And I felt my book was very timely. You know, there's a lot of people interested in the 2012. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are interested in, um, you know, end of times, Christ return, things of that nature. And, um, you know, I wanted, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to get it out before that. And a lot of times with regular publishing houses, you have to, it can be years, mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. before you can get it out. And another really key thing is, I want to do whatever I want to do with this book. Okay. You know, yeah. I want to be able to go to the Piggly Wiggly mm -hmm. and have a, uh, you know, have a, a book signing. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to ha re maintain the movie rights to this book. I want to be able to, you know, do anything I want to do with it. Like, for instance, the, uh, the video, the book trailer video. Um, you know, we, we're entering that in a, in a short film. Um, you know, a short film contest. You can't do that when you publish with a regular publishing house because they have to clear everything you do. Probably so many restrictions. Exactly. Things, you know, yeah. to get anything done, you have to clear it through them. And 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 so I wanted to do my own marketing. Mm -hmm. I have my and this isn't a solitary thing. <laughs> I, my family, my friends have all been behind me, and mm -hmm. and we've all worked together to do this. So um, self publishing is easier than it has ever been, ever been. It cost me $25 to publish this book. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's only because I wanted, I wanted extended distribution. I wanted to be able to, when I decided to, to make it available in major bookstores, libraries, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it cost $25 to do that. Otherwise, it's free to publish on CreateSpace. Hmm. which is the, pub, uh, the self-publishing I used. To get the book printed, did you have to have a minimum copies printed? You do not. Really? Gone are the days of buying a thousand books and putting them in right. your garage and oh, selling right. them one at a time. Mm -hmm. With computers now, you can, it's called P, uh, POD, Print on Demand. And literally, when you place an order on Amazon, they take you that one book, and they print that one book wow. and they send it out. 
Wow. wow. I know. Isn't that the most fascinating thing? Mm -hmm. So, and that was why I was at the nursing home. Mm -hmm. Be, I wanted to meet with the residents of the nursing home because you can literally write down your memoir, write down your memories, just your memories, like for your family, for, for you know, future mm -hmm. generations, because they don't care what you print. You could print a book that's just got, you know, thousand empty pages in the word, word in there, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but literally, you could just take your grandmother's memories, you could type them out, you could upload it to CreateSpace, it doesn't cost you anything, and you could print books for your family. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Yes. Yeah. That really I, just, I just think that is just, mm -hmm. you, you just, I mean, that, that changes the world, it really mm -hmm. does. Yeah. And the thing is, these, a lot of people like my father's generation, they're going to be gone, and with right. them their memories mm -hmm. and all these treasures they have, all these mm -hmm. wonderful stories they have are going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to encourage the residents to, to you know, record their memories mm -hmm. and get them down, you know. Right. And right. so, and it was really, really an honor for me to be there. Yeah. I was there on Monday. Now what do you, you and Joseph do in the real world? I'm an office manager uh, for a group of people who recruit financial advisors. And uh, Joseph's an engineer. He makes uh, airplane parts. He's, okay. Yeah, he's been there for 27 years. So he, yeah, so that's what we do any, for a living. How about children? children? Yeah. Oh, we have, we have uh, well, I'm going to have to say we have five children. Okay. We have four children, Miles, Tyler, Erica, and Joey. But then we also have Kylie, who's kind of our little adopted daughter we uh it's erica's best friend and she just she's part of the family so she's here with us now she loves the south she she'll probably land up coming with us before any of them do <laughs> <laughs> well very good so you've so, traveled with the family so is this oh, kind of yeah. like a little vacation for it you? is we came down to see my daddy he's in a, uh, a nursing home he's in hansville nursing home mm -hmm. my mother's also here and so we wanted to visit with her maybe talk her into going back with us to new york for a little while and uh, just see my brother and my sister-in-law and all my nieces and nephews and visit with family. And so we just combined this. We drove down here and, mm -hmm. you know, and had we're calling our Southern Book Tour. <laughs> and it has been that. It yes, has it been. Has. It's been great. It has been, definitely. Yeah. So. so are you excited about the reception that you're getting when you go places? And It has been. I am telling you, it's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, we... I, I thought, well, I'll sell a few books, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But we have, I mean, at, when we were at the Hansville Nursing Home, of course, we gave books to the residents. I, I could not charge them for mm -hmm. I mean, you can't charge those sweet people for a book. But mm -hmm. the staff and the community, we sold an entire case of books at Hansville mm -hmm. Nursing Home. I have never, ever seen such an outpouring of the community. And it's just, it's just mm -hmm. it just touches my heart so much because mm -hmm. I just... It's so great to come home and get that kind of reception and get people just, you know, and supporting was, you. Was your husband surprised? No, he's been around my family for quite a while now. So he was, he, you know, he, he, he told me, he said, nothing like this could ever happen in New York. And I said, you're absolutely right cause you, because here it's different. People are different yeah. and they... They really are. Yeah, and they, they rally around their own and they, they support... You know, it, it feels great to be the local girl who came, you know, who's, mm -hmm. you know, came, came back, back and, yeah. Yeah. and if they don't feel like I really ever left, but, you know, mm -hmm. right. it's always home to me. And mm -hmm. so. Well, we are going to have you back in the second half of the show, okay. and we're going to actually discuss the book, because I'm sure a lot of people are going, well, okay, what's so great about this book? Because Dennis <laughs> and I have said we really liked it. Uh -huh. So we're going to be doing that in the second half of the show. Okay. So you're not going to go anyplace. No, <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> okay.
we continue with more of Today on 2, it's time to give away our prizes. Our prize on Wednesday is the day pass to the Wellness and Aquatic Center. You can take six people with yep. the day pass. A lot Good of people deal. like this prize we give away on Wednesdays. Let's look at our merchant ads. We'll ask you a question, of course, about one of the ads, starting with Deb's Bookstore, your hometown bookstore just down the road. Deb's Bookstore. Gift certificates are available. Browsers always welcome at Deb's Bookstore. And Mr. Plumber, where they do plumbing, sewer, and drain services. It's Coleman's only professional full-service plumbing, and of course he does commercial, residential, and remodeling. Fast 24-hour service. He also features tank and tankless water heaters. Mr. Hicks menswear, business suits, and sport coats available in regular big and tall sizes. Also casual shirts and sizes up to 5X at Mr. Hicks menswear. And the uniform place for summer style, color, and comfort. They do feature the Landau uh, type products, and of course they have a cargo pant constructed for comfort at Uniform Place at 300 2nd Avenue Southeast. Tires for Less is more than just tires. They'll replace shocks and brakes, do oil changes, uh, take care of your air conditioner. You mentioned you saw them on Channel 2, you get $5 off an oil change at Tires for Less. And the crew that stands behind you when you need them the most. And we're talking about Earl's Body Shop. They do a great job, but they also have the 24-hour record service. They're located right there on Highway 31 North in Coleman and visit them on the web at earlsbodyshop.com. St. Paul's Lutheran School is now accepting applications for the next school year. Quality Christian education for over 50 years. Sign up now. Limited openings are left. And the Tudor Doctor, you can make this year the best school year ever for your child. They do free consultation. You can visit them on the web at inhometutors-alabama.com. They also have math reading and ACT preparation. And new to Coleman, Remold Tires. Save up to 50% on the HydroMaster uh, Remold Tire. It has a European-style tread. Best Hall Market Plus will be open tomorrow and Saturday from 8 a.m. till 3 p.m. I went by there yesterday and they have a wonderful variety of fresh vegetables and fruit. Senior Nutrition Program vouchers are accepted. And there we go with some of our merchant ads. Our telephone number 256-734-7399. I'm going to be kind of sneaky today. Okay. Which advertiser has D-Dog <laughs> in the ad? And we don't really name D-Dog. We talk about D-Dog right. once in a while. Right. Which business will you find D-Dog? D-Dog's picture is in the ad. So maybe that'll help people right, figure right. that out. Yeah. Okay, we have a caller ready to go. Hello, who's calling? Valerie. Valerie, from where are you calling? Coleman. Okay, where is D-Dog? Uh, Deb's Bookstore. Deb's Bookstore. Have you met D-Dog? Huh? Have you met D-Dog? No, I haven't. Well, you need to go in and meet D-Dog. Okay. All right, stay on the line, please. Thanks for calling in. D-Dog is always there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes every day. Mm -hmm. He guards he the waits store. Waits on customers. He does. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Runs the cash register. The oh, whole yeah. Bit. Okay, <laughs> let's look at the rest of our merchant ads right now. Starting with the Eva Bank Midnight Run. This is coming up on Friday night at midnight at the Civic Center. Registration is $20 at the Civic Center at Eva Bank or online. And Mullins Body Shop on Highway 31 South at Phelan. You've counted on them for over 52 years for auto body and for towing, and you can count on them today. Call Sunny, Stacy, Beth, or Jim, 256 734 Sweet deals available at Dairy Queen. Pick any four items, pay just $5.55. And cheeseburger lovers, you can get two single cheeseburgers for just $3 or two doubles for four. High Tide Sports Grill, right there on Highway 31 next to Burgess Body Shop. They have some new summer hours. They're always closed on Sundays, and they are open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights with some specials. Night Free Insurance, providing insurance coverage for three generations. Paul Knight started the business, continues today with Elliott and Westcott Free. They're independent insurance agents on First Avenue Southeast. Shimmer and Glow. This is a tanning boutique, kind of new. I have beginning, intermediate, and advanced tanning, stand-up tanning, custom spray tans if you don't want to w worry about the whole tanning thing. They also have child care provided, lotions, swimwear, handbags, and much, much more. Open the door to history and fine prints. This is Renard's Gallery and Gift, an art gallery, a gift store, a jewelry store. Custom framing is also available at Renard's Gallery and Gifts. 
And you're in good hands with Sorelia, Doug Doggett Jewelers. This is an antique-inspired jewelry that's really hot right now. Everybody really wants their, their necklaces and bracelets and earrings. Anyway, it's, you can get it at Doug Doggett Jewelers right there on Compass Way. Baldwin Counseling Center. If you have problems, need to talk, want privacy, help is a phone call away. Call Dr. Howard Rogers at the Baldwin Counseling Center, 256-737-3087. There we go with our merchant ads for today. Now it's time to check our birthdays. Who celebrates on the 8th of August? Well, we have a couple of them to announce. Let's see. We have uh, Dwight Rice and Bob Howell, and their names will be put into the drawing on Friday where they have the possibility of winning an 8x10 portrait from Baker Photography and an ice cream cake from Dairy Queen. Yay! And the weather brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Sunny today, a high of 92, partly cloudy tonight, low near 70. Mostly sunny tomorrow, but still a 40% chance of rain with a high around 89. At Premier Bank, we're a bit old-fashioned. We actually answer the telephone when you call. However, old-fashioned doesn't mean we aren't up to date. With the latest technology, Premier Bank meets the various needs of our customers. Mobile smartphone banking, internet banking, ATMs, convenient offices. At Premier Bank, we have the right products right now with good old-fashioned customer service. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor a loan program to your specific needs and requirements. Meet the KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. It might just change the way you cook. Induction technology heats the pan and not the cooking surface to offer you a new level of precision, speed, and energy efficiency. Nine settings give you different levels of heat to achieve precise temperatures and amazing responsiveness. Water boils in just seconds, making this the fastest to boil induction cooktop available. The KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. This I Know, Sarah's Confession. That's the name of the book, and we're going to continue our visit with the author, Miss Reba Ponder Weiss. And yeah. we're, we've been talking about how you're from the South, and right. you've kind of come back home for a little while right. to do this little book tour. Mm -hmm. Well, now we want to really focus on the book. Okay. Uh, like we told you before, Dennis and I have read the book. Really, Wonderful. He, you know, he told me, he said, it's a, it's a quick read, and it's a page turner, mm -hmm. and once you get started, you won't want to put it down, and he was right. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a little over a day to read this thing, and I right. I'm like, okay, i got to go do something else. But one more <laughs> chapter, one more chapter. So so I really enjoyed it. Thank you. But you start out kind of lighthearted and almost right. like fried green tomatoes kind of right. thing, this family. Tell us a little bit about the story. Well, it's about family. Mm -hmm. It's about faith. But then it's about survival. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to feel that way in the beginning of the book. I wanted you to feel comfortable and like everything's going along like it normally would go along because, you know, usually when a catastrophic event happens, you're not really ready. You think you may be ready, mm -hmm. but you're not really ready. Right. And, um, and so uh, a friend of mine said, he likes to say, it's kind of like steel magnolias go to Hades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, exactly. exactly I mean, right. it's, uh, you know, it, it's going to take you on a ride. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, people who think they're reading, you know, fried green tomatoes. It, right. It's not fried green tomatoes. <laughs> right. Uh, but it is about a group of people who are put in an extreme circumstance and I've always been really fascinated with how groups work and how people like, like, you know, you meet someone and you think, oh, they would just be a wonderful leader or that person would really be a go-getter under, mm -hmm. you know, the most terrible circumstances. But then they just crumble or fall apart when something happens. And then other people that you think, oh, they'll never be able to and then they rise to the top mm -hmm. and and also it really fascinates me about um, how you're affected by what you decide to do like who do you 
what do you do when you don't know what to do? Mm -hmm. Do you do you turn to yourself? Do you turn to your education? Do you turn to your peers? Do you let them decide for you what, how you feel about things? Do you turn to God? You know, do you not turn anywhere? Do you just mm -hmm. give up? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do? Right. And so this book is about that. It kind of weaves that interesting, interesting thread about, mm -hmm. you know, what do you do when you don't know what to do? So. I was going to ask, was this kind of like a revelation for you? I mean, you wrote this book, but was this something that you have been thinking about for a while? You mentioned that you have um, nightmares and different things like that. Mm. Was this one of your nightmares? Was yes, this it was. a premonition kind of thing? Well, I don't want to freak you out too much, <laughs> but, uh, and, and this book is a fictional book. It right. is totally a fictional book. I don't even begin to say that this was a prophetic dream or anything like that. Okay. It was, it's a fictional book. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did dream the dream on the early morning of September the 11th, 1999. Ooh. Yeah, that's kind mm -hmm. of disturbing and stuff but it was just one of those dreams that you wake up and you're just drenched in sweat and you don't know if it's real or not and for a moment you think it is and I instantly got up grabbed my journal and just sketched things just as fast as I could and wrote down everything as I could but it was such an intense story and so complex that it really took me a long time to think about how do I pull all these people together? Because mm -hmm. that is one of the negative things about the book. In the beginning, and I want to tell the readers, get through the first four chapters and you, mm -hmm. you will love it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have to have so many characters to bring the story that right. I want to bring. Right. And um, so um, it took me a long time to figure out how, how can I, you know, because it's diverse people from a, a conservative gospel preacher all the way up to atheist and even uh, Japanese Shinto, which is a form of spiritualism. So it's an entire spec spectrum of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, how would I bring all those people together? And um, actually, about two years ago, our oldest son, Miles, and his fiance Jennifer, they decided to get married, and immediately a little red light went off in my mind. A wedding. Yes. A wedding would, would bring would, yes. them together because yes. Jennifer, she's from New York. Okay. And so I thought, wow, that mm -hmm. could bring it together, and I started just, you know, writing the mm -hmm. first few chapters, and then next thing you know, it just pours out, mm -hmm. you know. I want to go back to the September the 11th event. Mm -hmm. What kind of dream did you have, it's especially since you remembered? I don't ever remember my dreams to, in order mm -hmm. to write them down, so I'm impressed that you can do that. Well, I had a dream that, um, that I was at, at home, in, my, in the home that I grew up in, and I, I, I ran up the stairs, and as I ran up the stairs, I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And it was a dark figure standing at the bottom of the stairs. And I got this very ominous feeling that something really terrible was about to happen. And there were a lot of people in the house. Uh, you know, just yeah. I knew there were a lot of people in the house. And I ran up to my, my bedroom, my old bedroom. And immediately something happened outside. A, a catastrophic, catastrophic event started happening. And the entire group of people actually... Um, we all kind of freaked out and started throwing things in the back of the of pickup trucks and, you know, bedding and match. I mean, just everything. And we actually went to the church nearby and went down into the basement of the church and an explosion occurred and the church building collapsed on us. Oh. And that is where, and then the, the story went ahead, like kind of like the book goes ahead. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not realistic to think that, mm -hmm. you know, you go into the church building. And it would, so I had to change it a lot. But, but it's the same premise. Mm -hmm. The dream is the same premise of, as the book. So when you started turning on TV that morning and, and saw things happening? Well, now, this was in 1999 when I dreamed the dream. Oh, okay. So it was before September okay. 11, 2001. Okay, okay. But, man, yeah, September 11, 2001 was really scary for us in New York. It was... Well, I was going to say, did you it live so there at the scary. time? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That, it's kind of like how people talk about how Pearl Harbor, how they felt when Pearl Harbor... I'll never forget. I was on my way to work, and... Mm -hmm. I, I was listening to NPR, and I heard uh, 
I heard a, they say, oh, a small plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, you know, mm -hmm. oh, wow. That was kind of crazy for somebody to do something like that. You right. know, how could you miss the World Trade Center? Right, you know? right. And just, oh, the fear. And we're on an island. We're on Long Island. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can get off is by ferry or boat mm -hmm. or going through Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And they closed everything, everything. Of course, we didn't know, mm -hmm. um, you know, what was going to happen. And people were just terrified out of mm -hmm. their minds. And I'm just going to share with you one thing. All the roads closed.